Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. Small stuffed animals are really cute, but super large stuffed animals are really fun. And Wesley definitely hits that fun department. Now I've chosen some really fun fabric to make Wesley in, and it is a Fisher Price fabric. So we have the Fisher Price bottom with all primary dots on them. And the top, I've chosen this really fun animal print that also has colors on it. I've made his fins and tails in primary colors and I've matched them up with a box of fabric. Now it does look like our crayons that we always loved, but when you opened it up, it's rolled fabric and it does have all the primary colors. So I'm going to be able to do his fins and his tails in all different colors. This is a free pattern from Riley Blake. And I'll put a link in the description for you. With their pattern, they did the top fabric pieced. This is a great idea to use up scrap fabrics. You can sew them together and then cut it out in one large piece of fabric. When you print out this pattern, you're going to find that it has a lot of pages, but there's not a lot of pages of directions. There are pattern pieces. Now these pattern pieces, you're going to be able to cut out and join together so that you can get the large pieces that you need. For example, the bottom of the whale does take all of these pieces that we need to tape together. And it really is easy to match them. The letters will indicate how to put those pages together. We just match up our dotted lines, tape it, cut it out, and we're good to go. So we have a bottom, a top, the pattern for his fins, and pattern pieces to make his tail. All of the pattern pieces will need to be cut twice, but they do need to be on reverse side. So if we place our fabrics together so they're right sides or wrong sides together, lay that pattern piece out and then cut it, we will end up with two of those pieces. If we cut both pieces with this pattern piece facing up, we're going to have two left sides or two right sides. So we do need one of each. So I really find the easiest is put our fabrics facing together and then cut out that pattern piece. That goes for the tail and all of the pieces. Now the pattern does recommend for us to use a fusible fleece. The fusible fleece does give the stuffed animal a lot more body and that extra fleece layer inside makes that batting and that stuffing inside smooth out. So it has a nice smooth finish. And it also helps protect the fabric from all the love and jumping on it is going to get. So you can use a fusible fleece, you can use quilt batting. And in my case, I didn't have enough of either or, so I just have a plain fleece that you would make some clothing with. And it really doesn't matter the color. So for all of the pieces, I layered my two fabrics facing each other, my fleece on each side. I put that pattern down and I cut out all four pieces at the same time. So I have the whale top done that way, the fins, everything has been done that way. So all of the pieces have been cut out first. Now that I have all my pieces cut, I'm going to be able to start sewing. And it might be fun if we do the fins first. So we will need two of these little side fins and the whale tail. Now I did choose different colors for each side just so that I can continue that learning and that color theme. Once those pieces are cut out, because I have them in the order that I'm going to sew them, I could just pin them right here and not disturb them. 
so I have the right sides facing in this fabric area. I do like to add extra pins when I'm sewing these thick layers together just so they don't shift on me. I'm going to sew all the way around the outside and leave this little opening open. Use a quarter inch seam allowance and turn your stitches down so that they're very small. The small stitches are going to help us do those curves and they'll also strengthen those seams. When you are stitching this, be sure you back stitch on each edge. Now we can turn it right side out just this way, but I personally like to clean up these edges. When you clean up the edges, after you turn it right side out, you don't have as much bulk right here in that seam. So I'm going to pull back this fleece and trim it off right to that seam allowance. And I'm going to do that to both sides. Now I know this is an extra step, but it really makes the finished product look so nice. We will need to do a couple of little snips, which means we're just going to take our scissors and just do one little snip coming up to that stitching line. We don't want to go to the stitching line, just come close. That's just going to help this turn and lay flat. So we're going to need any of these areas that are curving in to have just a little snip. In this little end, I am going to trim off more fabric. Now we're going to turn this right side out. We do have a little opening and this is a lot of fabric to come through this opening, but there is a way we can do it. I do have a turn it all kit that I do like to have. I use it for crafts, sewing and hobbies. What it looks like is a bunch of different size straws and some wood and metal little pokers. But you can do the same thing if you can find a straw that's going to fit inside. So I'm going to place that fat straw in between those two fabrics and have that straw go right to that point. Depending on the size, we're going to push this little fabric into that straw. So we're going to gently push that point in. And you can see that that fabric is slowly going into that straw. Just do that gently because we do not want to break those seams. I like to start it with the small one and then I can add that large one. Just make sure that that seam is in there. Now I'm going to remove the straw and I still have that wooden stick into the end and I can gently pull that fabric down. And before I go too far, I will take time and just poke that out. I can continue sliding this down until a certain point, then I can remove that and just pull that out. I do like to take that same little wooden stick and that little point, that rounded point is right there and I'm going to push it against the seams. So what that's doing is it's kind of pressing and pushing those seams out for me and all of that fabric is pointing out. That little step really gives it its shape now I can just take it to the iron and press it flat. So we have two fins and the tail. They're all done the same way. And to hold these layers together and give them some shape, we need to stitch all the way around and then just run some stitches so it gives it this fin look. And a few going down the ends. You could definitely turn up your stitches to be a little bit larger when you're doing this thread work. And you can see how those two layers of fleece and fabric and that stitching really do hold it nice together. Now we get to work on the body. I cut my layers together, but I'm not going to work with them together for this point. In this big front belly area, we're going to do some rows of stitching. 
and that's going to pull it in a little bit and give it a really nice round shape. And in the directions, they do have us draw lines on the wrong side of the fabric. So I just drew four lines. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to fold it right along those lines that we drew. So just start at one end and stitch. and Just keep folding right along that edge. So we're making little pleats, our little darts inside. So that is how that stitching is going to look. Each point I did start off the fabric, went on, stitched all the way, following somewhat my drawn line, and then came right back off. And with those two ends, I'm just going to be able to knot it. The other thing I did make sure that I did is I didn't go past a quarter inch seam because I do want this edge to match up to the other side. When we turn it over, we can see that we're creating this belly shape. I do want to put my fleece back on. So I've pinned that fleece on, starting from the bottom of the belly, around the tail, all the way up to the nose. If your fleece is really stretchy, all you're going to have to do is just tuck that fleece in and pin right along that edge that you cut. You're going to have this extra bit here so we can just fold this down just to continue that shape. If your fleece is not very stretchy and perhaps it's the fusible fleece, you don't need to fuse it. You can just still lay it on, smooth it out so this is flat inside, pin, and you can trim off the extra. Because I do have this wonderfully stretchy fleece, I'm just going to follow that edge and pin all those layers together. Just to avoid having all of these pins around this as I'm working, I'm going to base these layers together. And for this back, you can just ignore it. Measure down approximately 10 inches and stitch that fin on right here. We need to do this to both the right and the left sides of the belly. We're going to be able to add that top piece onto the belly. We do have the nose and those tails that are going to match up. So just match up those right sides. And I do have that fleece on there. I'm going to pin all of those layers together and do one row of stitching. We now get to add the eyes on. And there's lots of ways we can add the eyes. The directions tell us just to use a fusible web, fuse on approximately a three inch circle plus a little black circle for the eye and do a zigzag all the way around. I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I've made applique circles that I'm going to put on. But instead of adding a little black circle for the eye, I have animal eyes. So I've made a little X hole and then push that eye in all the way and then put that washer on and it will just slide on and you'll hear it clicking tight to the back. You can get these animal eyes at local sewing shops and craft and hobby shops. You can see how he's really starting to take shape. We need to add the tail onto one side. So smooth out your tail and put a little fold or a little dimple in the end of the tail. Now that the tail is on, we are going to be able to sew our two pieces together. So we're gonna match up those right sides, pin and stitch all the way around. We will need to leave an opening about eight inches. That way we can turn this right side out. We're also going to have lots of room to put that fill in. Be sure to keep the tail and the fin out of that stitching line and just stitch all the way around. This time we really don't need to trim off that extra batting or that fleece. So snip, trim off this little point 
said that little curve. Pull this all right side out. We can now give this a good stuffing. I'll be using some polyfill and I have two bags that have 20 ounces each. We do need to close up that opening and I would recommend using a ladder stitch. And Wesley the whale is now done. The body is about 36 inches long and he measures about 17 inches. This is going to be a fun toy for children. They're not only going to be able to carry this around, but I definitely can see them sitting on it and rocking. So Wesley is now done. Now we can use this pattern for many different fabrics. If you want a nice corduroy or a strong denim would look a lot of fun with Big Wesley. If you did it all in a white canvas and give children some markers, they could color on it and make their own pattern. Yes, little stuffed animals are awfully cute. But something as big as Wesley, well, he's just a lot of fun. I'll put a link in the description so you can get that pattern. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're going to make next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.